Out of all the people that you've tested yourself, what percentage came back positive? Um, probably 20%. 20%. So 80% came back negative. Right. Okay. You know, there was also, uh, they were saying that the doctors from Cuba kind of have a leg up on this type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, I guess a bunch of Cuban doctors went to like Italy and so forth. Do you know anything about that? Not really. No, not at all. Gotcha. Explain what uh, flattening the curve means. Um, so it, it's, a, it's a bell curve that they've created to kind of show the distribution and kind of rise and fall of this virus. So they kind of base it off the fact that every one person that has it will probably infect three to five other people. And based on the length of symptoms that the, you know, the, the virus carries of the two weeks, to one, uh, five to 12 days or whatever of the you know, asymptomatic phase, and then you have the flu-like phase, and then you got the viral pneumonia phase. So putting all that three to four week window of you having the infection with you infecting three to five people, they come up with this little graph um, of it rising to a certain point. And right now, they're estimating that the peak point for, you, for the USA is going to be sometime middle of this month. Yeah, in two weeks. Uh, and I guess, I guess this is sort of the part that a lot of people struggle with. There are some sources that I've read that say that eventually half the U.S. population will get it. I mean, it's hard to say. Okay. And when you look at the whole flattening of the curve diagram, mm -hmm. it almost implies that the same number of people will eventually get it. You're just trying not to overload the hospitals at the mm -hmm. peak. Is right. that is that accurate? Um, yeah, kind of. And it, the, the main thing we try to tell people is, you know, don't you, we don't want people coming to the hospital unless they're really sick. Because, yeah, again, we were talking about this earlier, you, you're, you end up contaminating people more by being in the hospital, even if you, you might not have it and you get it in the hospital. So that's why I always tell patients don't, you know, or people that ask me questions, I always tell them, like, unless you're really sick. Now, I'm talking like your, your breathing is truly compromised or you have the comorbid conditions, you've got a lot of medical conditions, your age. If you don't have those risk factors and you just got flu-like symptoms, fever, cough, you should relax and, and, and just see how it does. Okay. Well, if someone that you've come in contact with tests positive for it, does that give you the green light to get tested yourself? Or, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So uh, even, in, even in the hospital right now, there was actually a patient of mine that, um, that tested positive after being in the hospital. So the, the patient didn't have it, but they la later tested positive for it. So now they want me to get tested okay, because so I had exposure to that patient before. Have you been tested at all? Um, not yet. Not yet. Okay. Are you scared to take Vlad's the test? Scared right now. <laughs> hey man, I'm here. Okay. <laughs> that shows that shows my level of bravery. No, no I'm here you right got, now. You, got, you gotta have that, man. Yeah, in person. This yeah, is not a FaceTime interview. We're actually sitting here face right. to no, face. No, I mean even yeah. even with me, like when I first, you know, we were talking about this. I thought we we're gonna do it. Like everyone's, you see, everybody, all the all the mediums are doing little FaceTime yeah. interviews and stuff. Vlad's like, can you get to L.A.? And I'm like, um. Right now, everybody's advising me not to travel. Everyone's, you know, trying to stay put in their homes. But I'm yeah. like, you know what? Let's do it. Yeah, well, you know, I watch 60 Minutes. I kind of uh, really base a lot of this company on what 60 Minutes do. And on 60 Minutes, they're they're interviewing doctors face to face. Right. You know, I feel like we have to be on the front lines because we have literally millions of people every single day. I, the way I look at it, man, if I could be face to face with COVID-19 patients every day, I could be face to face with Vlad. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so originally, Trump said that by Easter, all mm -hmm. the businesses should be opening back up. And what's now that, that got updated to April 30th. Right. I personally don't believe April 30th. I mean, it's hard to say. You know, these estimates that people are making about flattening the curve, these are all these are all estimates, man. This is approximations. We can't really tell until the real numbers come and we see where the direction of this virus is going. If it truly is starting to fade away. Even in China, they're saying now they're back to normal, but are they back to normal? We don't know. Right, and there's that. So there was a, a report that came out just today that basically said that China had been underreporting the number of cases massively. Do you believe that? I mean, I can't say it's a fact, but you know, I would, it, it seems pretty pretty odd for me that all of a sudden you had all these people that had the virus and all these people that were infected that you would have such a dramatic decrease in it. Right, but the thing that also is kind of strange to me because look, at the end of the day, China has no freedom of speech. It's a communist country. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't speak out against the government. You can't have a media outlet that speaks negatively about the government. But you have a bunch of US businesses like Apple, 
Nike, Starbucks. They have all reopened their stores in China. These companies are all run by American CEOs. And those stores are all closed in the US and Europe. Mm. So why do you think that they would open back up in China based on what the Chinese government is saying? I mean, I think they're just trying to get their rep back up because I think they, they, uh, their economy and just the, the overall, you know, image of China is is completely changed in people's minds. Like people are scared to do any business with China, so they have to put on some kind of a, a, a image right now to say that, hey, look, things are getting better for us. Okay, that's my personal opinion. About okay, it anyway, you know what I'm saying. If you were to guess, just throw out a wild number. When will it be when the U.S. and the rest of the world will get back to normal? Like it never happened. Like it never happened. Like it never happened. I don't. I don't think. I. You know. I, I, you know. Let's say this thing dies down as the as the curve explains and it gets peaks up. Yeah. They're saying it, it'll peak up in the middle of April and then it, it'll level off and then the cases will die down until June and early July. If, if if that's how the curve does fall into play, I think after that, the I think the whole world really is going to still be going through post traumatic stress for okay. a long period of time again because now there's already talks about the virus coming back. In the fall. Yeah, exactly. And having a second wave. So people are going to be like basically having a guard up constantly. Because now, look, has this ever happened in history where everything got shut down in the world? No. I mean, the one thing that I've seen this compared to is the Spanish flu of 1918. That's a long time ago. Over 100 years ago. There's literally no living people that have gone through it that right. remember it. So I feel like the the, the post traumatic stress that people are going to have of what just happened, it's not something that's going to go away. People are going to remember that. I, I think I think the, the the practices that people are is it, it's kind of it's bad in the sense that people are just scared. There's there's a, there's a certain fear that's developed. I you know I walk around and people that would normally be happily greeting me, they were trying to run away from me. They, nobody want like the social contact yeah. is becoming something people are scared of. Well, explain the concept of herd immunity. Um. Herd immunity, uh, that's basically when you have, uh, you know, a, a large population that's faced some kind of infection and there's like all antibodies that are built up, you know, it, it kind of, I mean, it's, it's kind of like uh, up in the air as how, you know, truthful or uh, like, you know, factual that is. But um, I mean, it could be a true thing. Well, what it basically means from what I understand is that when enough people get it mm -hmm. and survive it, yeah, they essentially become immune and the people that don't survive it, they, they die off. Right. And well, enough of the population becomes immune to the point where it stops being an issue. Right. Well, I mean, to be honest, vi viruses are living things too. So they got a mind of their own. They all, they, they, they know, you know, if it's not working for them, is they mutate. They try to change up just right. like humans, you know. So there's constant evolution that's taking place. And then, uh, you know, that's why the influenza it changes every year. It's not the same strain. Right. Because there's different strains of COVID-19 from what I understand. There's a couple... Um, that they have, I don't. I don't really know if they have any more than that right now. But there's the, you know, is the S and the L strain that I've heard about. L being a little bit more aggressive than that than the S is. But there's still debate as to whether that's real or not. Okay. Now, originally it was an epidemic. Right. Then it became a pandemic, pandemic. which means worldwide. Right. Epidemic means local. Right. Pandemic means worldwide. Mm -hmm. Now there is the theory that it will eventually become an endemic, which means that's something that's permanently part of human civilization. Uh, for example, like HIV mm -hmm. and AIDS mm -hmm. is an endemic. Okay. It's been around for decades. Yes, you can control it, you could take pills for it, yeah. but there's new cases every single day right. all over the world. Will COVID-19 potentially become an endemic? Yeah, so only time can tell, man. Only time can tell. Right now, we can postulate, theorize about it, but um, to actually see where it goes from here, it's just, you know, I'm, I'm as in the dark about that as anybody else. I mean, being on the front lines the way you are, how is it affecting you, you know, mentally? Uh, I mean, tremendously, man. I feel like I have, to, I have to basically contemplate life and death every single day. I walk into the hospital. The second I walk in, I step foot to the hospital. I, you know, you constantly have this tension that, like, you're basically in the, the the midst of the max exposure. Everybody's running away from this thing and I have to run towards it. Yeah. So it's just kind of, you know, it puts me in this place mentally where I'm constantly look trying to look out for my own self and my family.
You know, because when I go back home and I take the scrubs and the, and the white coat off, yeah. am I infecting my family? Yeah. And, you know, our main office is in New York. I remember I used to live right by the Javits Center mm-hmm. in New York, which is a massive, it's like almost a million square feet. And they've literally turned that into a massive hospital mm-hmm. with hospital cubicles. And they're even setting up uh, tents in um, Central Park. Okay. So I don't think they're being filled yet, but they're basically preparing for the very worst. Do you think that in the U.S. there's going to be a situation like in Italy where there's so many people that are on the verge of dying that there's just not enough respirators? There's it's, not it's, enough. It's already happening. It's already I mean, happening. Uh, yeah, it's, I mean, it's... And um, even in our hospital, like, we're worried about because we don't have enough supplies. We still don't have enough masks. To this day, we don't have it, we don't have enough N95 masks in the hospital. I'm still having to reuse the same mask over to see my patients. So I'm putting myself at risk. Wow. Um to this day. 